Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Newman and today I am here to show you how to properly perform cardiopulmonary resuscitation or CPR on adults. I will walk you through all the steps and if you have any questions do not hesitate to ask at any time. At the end of the class everyone will get the chance to try to complete the procedure all on their own. So let's start. When you see someone lying on the ground without any signs of life the first thing you need to do is look around and quickly assess the scene. Make sure no safety hazards such as leaking gas or fire are present. Then try to communicate with the person. Shake the person gently and loudly ask them if everything is okay. You may use questions such as, Sir, Madam, are you alright? Just like that. If you don't receive any response, Check if the person is breathing regularly by watching their chest movement and listening to their mouth for a few seconds. Watch out for gasping, which is an abnormal pattern of breathing characterized by labored breaths accompanied by strange vocalizations. It is a sign of cardiac arrest and can be easily mistaken for normal breathing. Yes? Should I check the person's pulse? Isn't that a good way to know the state of the cardiovascular system of the patient? Good question. Do not waste time trying to check their pulse. In such a stressful situation, it is very likely that you will not be able to feel it, and therefore it is not recommended. Next thing you need to do when you realize the person is not breathing correctly is to call for help. If you already have someone else there with you, one of you should call 112 and ask for an ambulance. Now I will repeat everything so you have a better idea of how to proceed. This is how you can do it. So, are you okay? Help! Help! Someone call an ambulance. After that, you need to act fast and stabilize the patient. Lay the person on a firm surface, for example, on the floor, and turn them on their back if necessary. Here, the dummy is already on the ground. Then open their airways by gently tilting the head. Always be careful when positioning the head because an unknown spinal injury may be present. Now you can finally start with the most crucial part, the heart massage. Place one hand in the center of the person's chest bone, then place the other hand on top of the first hand. Lock the fingers and start pushing, making every push approximately five centimeters deep. Make sure to also fully release the compression in order to let the heart fill up with new blood. Push at the rate of 100 per minute. Use your upper body strength so you don't tie yourself easily or too quickly. Keep your elbows straight and position your shoulders directly above your hands to be most effective. After 30 pushes, the next step is mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. Use the head tilt chin lift maneuver. Place your hand on the person's forehead and gently tilt the head back. Then with the other hand, lift the chin forward to open the airway. Now pinch their nose and cover their mouth with yours, making a seal. Excuse me, what if the patient is covered with blood? He could be potentially infectious. Do I have to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing on such a patient? Excellent question. You are never required to perform mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing. You should protect your own health first. In such scenarios, you have several options. One is to use a special mask that prevents you from coming into contact with a person's blood. If you are not in possession of such a mask, you should keep performing the heart massage until the ambulance arrives. Okay, where were we? Mouth to mouth breathing, alright. So cover the person's mouth with yours and give the first breath. Watch if their chest is rising when you do so. If not, you need to fix the head, tilt, chin, lift position. Give the second breath and resume compressions. Remember, the ratio in adults is 30 compressions to two breaths. If you're working alone, after approximately one minute from the beginning, stop to call the 112. Then resume compressions until the ambulance arrives or until complete exhaustion. If you are in a public area, such as a mall or an airport, there should be an AED, an automated external defibrillator, somewhere in the building. This is a true lifesaver for patients with fibrillations or tachycardia. 
It told you exactly what to do when using it, so it is extremely user-friendly. You just place the electrodes as described in the picture, push the button and wait for further instructions. The crucial thing is to always try to minimize the time you are not doing the compressions. That goes for giving breaths as well. OK, so again it's time for revision. We know our patient is unresponsive and not breathing correctly. We call for help and we start with compressions like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you just keep going. Now you know everything that is necessary to successfully administer CPR. All you need is practice. So who's up first? <laughs>